Hello and welcome to this lesson 4.2. We will talk about labeling and how to differentiate labels uh, from one feature to another. Um, in the last session, we talked about labeling points, and if we would apply the same labeling algorithm to lines, we will end up with some very strange behavior because lines tend to be very long, they tend to bend, they tend to be curved, like this beauty here. And so if we would just apply labels to um, a line layer, like this one here, the roads, um, let's try this out, right? Let's click on apply. And now there are a lot of labels, I cannot really see them. Oh, there it is. Quite small. So let's increase once again the size of the labels as we have done in the last session. Click on apply. Now 16. 16 is fine, right? But uh, again, we need to adjust the buffer to, to make it even better to see. The color is uh, here set to be pale yellow. Click on apply. Now that's better. Okay, once again. Just for the distraction, I will turn off the places layer, and you might remember the uh, the roads are here marked as a as a thick line. We'll go to your symbology and apply the thickness of the line to make it very very thin. You can see it here, so only 0.4 millimeters. So that's now better to read, but one thing first of all the vortex street the vortex street is a very longest street and you can see that the labels of the vortex street are placed here quite regularly we will switch off this behavior by going to labels rendering and uh, no, placement not there again now where was it rendering yeah and set merge connected lines to avoid duplicate labels just turn this on. Have a look on the vertex street. Now I can see only one time the label for the vortex street. That's quite good. Now and then there is a problem with smallish streets. So let's have a look here on the hoop. The hoop is very small, right? But due to the fact that there are still some place to visualize the label it is drawn so what we can do we can say oh, i would only like to see labels for features that are a little bit larger so here currently or normally this is set to 0, 0 0.0 millimeters suppress so labeling of features smaller than zero millimeters so if i turn this on and increase the value let's say to 20 millimeters you will see the difference i'll put this aside Here's a hoop, a very small street, short street, still visible, great. Maybe the street is not that uh, short as I thought. But let's have a look here on the icon. Increase the value. Click on apply. And so the hoop as well as the icon is not drawn. So you can play around with that uh, to suppress the labeling of a smaller uh, smaller streets. That's a very easy and common task to do. And there's the labeling or the, the, the placement. Um, have a look here on the Van Eden Street. The Van Eden Street is a curved line. You can see it here, nice curvature. But this, the label itself is just parallel to something, parallel to whatever, whatsoever. So when we click on curved, it is drawn along the line that makes it even easier to read and to follow and the obstruction is not that hard another quite good feature is to, to switch normally it is switched on to be above the line let's have a look here above the line means that it's above the line you can see the, the line itself and you can enter or you can connect it with a with a label in your mind but especially if you tend to have very very broad signatures, so it's wide signatures, like you tend to have for streets. It is also very common to say, well, I would like to have it on the line. Click on apply, and then name will be again on the street. Okay.
now then if you would like to apply a style or now every street has a common label everything is done the same so how can we interact with the attributes because of course we have attributes at our objects and we would like to differentiate attributes by or features by the attributes let's switch off the roads layer and switch on again the places layer to show you how to interconnect labeling styles with the with the uh, attributes itself so therefore we'll go to text and you can see there are always those tiny icons here this means i would like to adjust the usage of that functionality like underscoring right to an attribute and therefore we will have a data defined override i will click on this and say i would like to edit great now there is this uh, string builder expression string builder and it asks you to respond with true or false expected format written here down below bool that means one equals true zero equals false so how to write a boolean statement like this say place equals town okay this would be town now it's a well expression is invalid because town is a string we need to write it like that now it has an output preview of one well this is cool so it checks whether the place attribute of a feature equals town if so it's one if not it's zero sometimes you see this written as place with double scores that is something similar um tends to come from the sql uh, world where you have the attributes or the attribute names written in double uh, the, uh, double upper score so place equals town let's press on okay apply let's zoom out zoom out a little bit to see oh well that's great so now we have swellendam as buffels buffel yaks rivier uh, placed with an underscore we can go further with that of course we can also adjust the italic um, attribute with the town Again, okay and okay there we are now all the towns are written in italic and with an underscore that makes it easy to differentiate between certain features we will go on with this example with the streets layer so switch off buildings and so on streets have or the the this comes from from or the roads this comes from OpenStreetMap, and there are a lot of attributes just uh, assigned to this layer. So let's have a look here: name, destination, and so on. But one attribute is of is quite of importance. This is the highway attribute. The highway attribute says, "Well, we have secondary, primary, or primary, secondary, and tertiary streets." And then, then there are some other streets like the residential, pathway, cycleway, and so on. But we will use this um, attribute to define a label size. By saying so, we will check whether highway equals a certain value, and then we will define a label size for that. We will go on by doing so using the function open field calculator. So the field calculator will allow us to create a new attribute here and we would like to or a new field and at this time or in this case we will name it label size and the label size is of type integer we will we don't need so much space so in, uh, output field length should be only 10 uh, 2 in this time and now it expects some sort of what should be the end of course i can only write 20 so every every feature will have the value of 20 for this field but i will go further i will work with an if statement so if equals and you can check here for if so you have a function if tests a condition and returns a different result depending on the conditional and i've already created this one here right so if 
highway equals primary, then this value should be 18. Otherwise, it should be 12. Now, there are not so many primary highways in the data set, so I will go on and say, well, if it's not highway, uh, it, it's not if it's not primary, let's go with uh, let's have a certain value for secondaries as well. If highway equals secondary, secondary, then it should be sixteen. And if it's not primary nor secondary, if it's tertiary. It should be 14. Now I have um, a Cascadian style, so it checks if, if it's primary, then the label size should be 18. If it's secondary, it should be 16. The tertiary, 14. Otherwise, 12. Let's press on OK. And now it will create the new field, assign the values to it, and we will have a look. It takes some time due to the fact that I have more than 18,000 um, attributes here. Click OK. Now I have the task complete, calculating field grade. Let's close this one and let's have a look here on the right corner. Highway. And now I should see different sizes. Yes, and there they are 16, 12, and so on. I will use this attribute now. First, save. Take some time again. and uncheck the editing mode. Close this one. I will use this information now for the label size like we have done before. So we have here the size of the label. Once again, there's this little um, data defined override. I will override it with an attribute called label size. So we'll go to here to um, field type and there's label size. There we are. Just press on apply. Press on OK. And now we have data defined labels. How can we see that? We need to check for a primary and tertiary street. With a name. So let's sort by name. And here the Whitbrook, uh, Whitbrook Primary Street. We will pan there and zoom there. And the Whitbrook Street is now visible. Quite good. Double click on this again to check whether we have suppressed the labeling of features. Yes, we have. That's why the labeling was gone. But unfortunately, there are no other labels around, so we cannot really check the right. Oh, there's a tertiary street. Oh, there's another street. Let's go there. But you can see that this is a uh, primary street type and this is some sort of secondary or maybe tertiary street type and the label uh, tend to differentiate, right? So we have smaller labels for lower priority streets and uh, larger labels for high priority streets. So this is a way how to deal with different attributes in your labeling. What we have learned today is first of all how to interconnect some style attributes with the data in terms of attributes. Um, we have worked with the field calculator where you can calculate fields like we have done with the label size according to another attribute, in this term type highway. We have learned about the if function in the field calculator and we have learned how to label um, polylines in a convenient way with curvatures, with um, shadows, and uh, so on. Thanks again for watching. Check out the next lesson, and take care and goodbye.